you're still working with Larry, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. How does that how does that partnership work? Superbly. <laughs> I think anybody who's read any of the books would agree. Well, certainly financially it has been. We've made more money with our collaborations than Nordoff and Hall did with Mutiny on the Bounty, so don't if you don't like modern fantasy try ours nevin and i wrote a different kind of fantasy it's it's sort of hard fantasy with rivets uh that would be which which the burning one? city Beowulf and burning Children. tower are the major okay ones. okay good i like fantasy actually and i think there's a whole new market for fantasy because of game of thrones and uh and it, its popularity so fantasy is bigger than science fiction as far as the market is concerned we were expecting to do a lot better with with uh with Burning City, I'm not. I, I thought I think that in some respects, uh, Burning Tower is one of the best novels we ever did. As as just as an entertaining novel. Well, now I've got to read it. I've never re read it. Well, read Burning City first. Burning it's not City. that you have to, but Burning City. Burning City with Larry, Larry had to write it because he got tired of the riots in Los Angeles and he wanted to write something about it. Burning Tower was just a novel set in the times that we had invented for Burning City. So in some respects, Burning Tower is much more of a novel. And I think it's a great love story myself. When, when was the last Niven Pornell uh, book? Oh, probably 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. Old, yeah. yeah. And we, 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 uh, we did couple with Barnes on uh, the first interstellar colony. It was we, we put it 10 light years away in a slower than light universe travel situation and tried to show some of the problems you might have if you have a couple of hundred people and that's it. That they're never going to get any help. They're never going to get anything else. What they brought's what they've got, and maybe the planet has some surprises for you. That's called the Legacy of Herot, and uh, the next book in that series was called Beowulf's Children. The Gripping Hand was ninety four. That might be the last one, huh? Uh, Gripping Hand was a sequel to Moten God's Eye. We yeah. have since that time written. I know we've written two heroic fantasies. Um, um, so how does, City. How, you don't you're not in the same room when you're writing together. Not much now. We were at first. We we start we wrote Moten God's Eye and Lucifer's Hammer basically on typewriters, selectric typewriters. <laughs> banging on I just imagine in the same room banging away. Sometimes I'd write something and he'd write something and sometimes <laughs> not. And merging the two manuscripts was not easy. Once we <laughs> got and oh, once we got electric, we got Z80s with electric pencil. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. He was on display in the Smithsonian until recently. They closed that history of computers and communications wing, and they claim they're going to reopen it. I, I have so. no idea when or whether Zeke will be in it, but he was certainly on display for 20 or 30 years, yeah. and that's doing pretty good. That's all right. I mean, yeah. how many people do you know whose personal <laughs> computer has been on display in the Smithsonian? You're the only one I know of. Yeah, probably all of them, yeah. <laughs> I know all of them. <laughs> that was an S100 computer, and I remember you wrote a lot about Ezekiel in those days. At, yeah, uh, he was Ezekiel, my friend who happens to be an S100. Yeah. <laughs> Do you you have the same now in those days you really did have to spend a lot of time massaging tweaking and getting these things working and you you and your son I know spent a lot of time banging on them it's a little different now they're really commoditized aren't they and they and their appliances they are and that was one reason why I don't do so much of that writing anymore because they have become a commodity and it's not such an adventure no. but on the other hand Eric and I have recently built some new machines, and I've okay. got a, I've got a, a Windows 8 machine, which I must say I am working very hard at trying to like. And um, I know what you mean, Jerry. What technology so, that we, do we not have that you would like to see that you were you were really hoping they would have by now? Uh, actually, it's got about where I thought it would be. You don't want to see. Uh, uh, a computer you could talk to that would talk back to you, or I, you know, oddly enough, I, I, I don't. And the reason is that um, I, I find that 
that I don't dictate well. Yeah. And that's just because I gotten I can type fast. Right. And it's so easy to edit. I mean, Microsoft Word is a little big and cumbersome, but it works, and it works fine, and it works fast. Right. And um, I can type faster, at, at least as fast as I think. And so talking doesn't do me any good. I think that's always true. Even if you only had to fix one word in a hundred, that's going to slow you down to the point yeah. where typing's faster. Yeah. And in in when I was younger, um, do you remember? You ever read? Uh, Stories by a guy named Miller about a post-atomic war world called uh, Canticle for Leibowitz. Oh, I loved Canticle for Leibowitz. That was in a well, wonderful book. And and in the third volume of that series, he had Lo the Lighter. He had a, he had a um, he had the abbot of the Saint Leibowitz's Abbey. Um, was talking to the abominable auto scribe <laughs> and he would dictate something in english and it would give him a latin <laughs> version of what he had said and i always thought that would be an interesting thing to have yeah well i, I think google's working on that actually i'm pretty sure they are relation works pretty good now yeah. when yeah. i was um that's kind of amazing, isn't it? I mean, one of the things that's so interesting is this stuff moves slowly enough that you don't really notice it, and all of a sudden you're dictating in a foreign language. Yes, and, well, let me give you an example. Um, early days, John McCarthy, he, he died last year. He was head of artificial intelligence yeah. at Stanford for essentially all his life. Uh, old friend of mine, good friend. Um, John had two ambitions. One of them was he, he worked on automatic language translation. And in those days, one of the tests was you would feed the translator a phrase. It would translate it into Russian or Chinese. Those were the ones that were being fund, funded, oddly enough, in, those, in the Cold War days. <laughs> and then you take the translation that came out and feed it back into the system and see what it gave you. And the classic one was if you start with the phrase, uh, the spirit is willing, but at the flesh is weak, you fed it in in Russian and it came back with the meat is good, but the vodka is awful. <laughs> Which may be not a bad translation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a lot better than that. <laughs> But I bet you if you said, I'll take 400 uh, truck mufflers, uh, can you deliver them on Thursday? It would be a ter perfect round trip. <laughs> Just don't do yeah. poetry. What part of uh, writing do you like the best? Having done it. <laughs> now, you stole like that. From... Writers. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I got that from any. I think Mark Twain said that. <laughs> oh, there are hundreds. There are, I, I have known thousands of writers. <laughs> I've known maybe five who like to write. Yeah, isn't that Nevin interesting? Likes to write. Um, but but why do you write then if you don't like it? I like to have written. It's <laughs> rewarding. Why do you Why do you run a mile? Because at the why end, why do you run five you miles? Feel better, yeah. All right. Yeah, because you feel you know. Why do you stop hitting yourself in the head with a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> it feels so good when you stop. No, um, I I. I like to have written. I like everything about writing, but the act and sometimes, sometimes things will just start flowing and you can't write fast enough and everything's wonderful. But if you count on that, don't be a writer. How many, because, how many words a day do you write? Now, not so very many <laughs> uh, at a time. I used to do. When I was doing the bite columns, I had to do ten thousand words a month of uh, of, of nonfiction. Like you know, uh, I do this stupid stuff so you don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> looking around with 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 technology, yeah. and then <clears throat> Larry and I were turning out two hundred and forty thousand not word novels every couple of years. Amazing. So you you work it out. It's it, uh, and and I was often at that time doing the science columns for galaxy or some other major science fiction magazine so 
I used to turn out a lot. I used to could write a lot and did. It, it's, uh, I'm 80 years old now, Leo, and I don't get those periods when everything just flows very well as often as I used to. Well, what do you like I, to do I these... remember Isaac, Isaac was having the same problems when he got old. He, Asimov, yeah. I, Isaac was, yeah, Isaac was, was, was the one writer that you could absolutely say liked to write. He was prolific. He was enormously prolific, and he loved to write. And, I mean, it, it, was, it was enough that his wife would have trouble getting him to come out to a dinner party that he was guest of honor of because he wanted to write one more page, that type of thing. He just loved it when he was writing. He felt better when he was writing than he did at probably any other time of his life.